Before we start with today's video, I want to give a shout out to Metal Poop uh, for becoming my uh, tier one level uh, supporter member on my channel, and I also want to give a big shout out to uh, Rookie Trainer Blue for becoming uh, Trainer Red tier level. Uh, I've talked to Rookie Trainer too on Discord. Uh, there's some pledges, there's some uh, uh, prizes for pledging, and uh, if you guys want to go check it out, thank you to both of you for supporting my channel. It really means a lot. And I hope you too and everybody else is going to enjoy the show. Let's get right to it. Hey fellow comrades, how you guys been doing? It's your boys in here and welcome to today's battle against Oh My God Hide. Uh, this battle, third generation battle that we got going here, um, let's put it this way. This battle has been speed up tremendously. Okay, this battle has been speed up tremendously. Because we are generally speaking about a battle that is taking place uh, over a continent and uh, the, the battle was super slow. But I'm bringing it as a gen because I know you guys love it. Uh, sadly enough, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this regularly because the amount of speed up and the amount of time this took was quite significant. Anyways, let's get right into it. Uh, Aerodactyl versus his shiny Tyranitar. My god, that shiny Tyranitar is such a beautiful rare find. Sadly enough, it was, of course, uh, edited. So, it's, you know, the, <laughs> the cost of a rare it really isn't all that uh, special anymore. But, uh, anyways, Rock Slide is something I was expecting. Choice Bandit Earthquake from Aerodactyl is going to be uh, doing about 60-70%, I would presume. Uh, Swampert is always a good switch towards the likes of this behemoth. Uh, basically, you know... Tyranitar, I always look at like a giant Godzilla, right? But giant Godzilla is sourcing from Japan. And what doesn't Japan... What is something that Japan doesn't like? It's a bad joke. Earthquake. So, speaking of Earthquake, I'm gonna go for Ice Beam. Because I'm actually expecting him to switch out to something that is relating to flying. Uh, flying type Pokemon. And he switches out to Vaporeon. Now, Vaporeon can take this literally for days. Uh, we're speaking about Sandstorm doing additional damage. But I'm actually very much scared of the potential of him running Hidden Power Grass. You know, Swampert is a is a behemoth himself. But here's the thing. If you're going to be throwing grass at it, he's not going to like that. You know, he's not going to like that. He's got a sweet spot for the grass. So, uh, speaking of grass, I'm switching out something. Uh, I'm, I'm switching out Swampert, of course. I'm not going to call it something. But it definitely looks like... Where did Swampert get inspiration from? I can like see a frog in it and maybe a couple of other animals, but I got no idea. Like, I'm still kind of confused on that mod. Still pretty cool though. I still prefer Blaze again, by the way. But anyways, I did not expect it, its Pokemon to start playing with toys. So Sup was an additional good switch on his behalf, knowing that I can probably be expecting like a Hydro Pump or Surf. You know, it's going to be doing a lot against Swampert. But I was thinking maybe he's not going to play this because Earthquake is going to do a lot. You know, it would break his Sup either way. Fortress, on the other hand, barely survives. But, you know, Fortress doesn't look like a light ball, and if you put some water down it, you know, and if you put a Fortress on it, it's probably gonna drown. You know? It doesn't look like a Pokemon that can actually legitimately swim. So I get it. I get why Fortress was barely surviving there, without disturbing the walls. So, speaking of that, I put some spikes on it, because I felt, you know what, <laughs> at this point, I may as well get some spikes in there. It's not a Fortress Earthquake is gonna break the Vaporeus's up. If he's invested into HP, I doubt that's gonna happen. Uh, it depends on his bulk, generally speaking, but I'm thinking his modest, based on the damage, Ice Beam was a way better move on my opponent's disposal because, you know, there's no reason to Hydro Pump again. Seeing he's under a sub, he knows I'm gonna try to go for the boom, trying to take his Pokemon down, and afterwards switch out to something more appropriate. So, here we go. Snorlax is in here playing and no games like Vaporeon under sub is clearly a threat. And I'm thinking, okay. Sub Vaporeon with Hydro Pump, right? And Ice Beam. Okay. Sub Vaporeon with Hydro Pump and Ice Beam. One thing I haven't seen yet, and that is Baton Pass. Now, I should have seen this coming, like, literally miles away, galaxies away. I definitely should have. I mean, it's a Snorlax, you know, you can see this Pokemon from Mars. But, thing is, even Snorlax's body is not gonna take what is about to come in. And that is the T-Tar. So Body Slam is a heavily terrible move on my behalf. I should have Earthquake there. Definitely. Heck, I should have even cursed if that was the case, to be honest. But uh, sadly enough, uh, he does 
take that really well expect me to body slam instead of earthquake i should have earthquake there because you're you're about to see why i'm saying this and you, some of you expert players can veteran players can easily tell what's about to happen you know it's uh it's it's bulking up it's uh it's pressure it's focus uh, playing under a, a toy and you know the toy is protecting the pokemon so basically once we do break that toy it's not gonna registrate into the damage calculation which means i'm gonna be obliterated by the likes of focus punch so yeah what can i say um this is quite unfortunate i was thinking maybe by some miracle snorlax is able to survive this but who am i kidding so <laughs> snorlax <laughs> It's gonna be taken down, but I think it's uh, poetic, you know, a Godzilla-looking Pokemon against uh, Behemoth that is Snorlax, the two Pokemon that can be seen from Mars, I think it's the appropriate way to take it down. If anything goes down, it has to be, a gigantic thing has to take down another gigantic thing. Now, we have to turn that into an actual movie. I think Tyranitar vs Snorlax movie, Pokemon movie 250 or something, would need to happen. It will be an absolute glorious the best movie of all time i'm pretty sure like imagine swampert and snorlax teaming up against tyranitar and um who's agron yeah agron man that would be pretty cool actually that would probably the, uh, what am i even talking about <laughs> trying to trying to commentary bullshit while stuff were happening of course yeah, but speaking of bullshit, my opponent here makes an exceptional move. Uh, it does expect the Earthquake this time around, which I do go for it. Last time I went Ice Beam, but now I'm like, you know, he's got Vaporeon. Hydro Pump does a lot of damage. He's gonna do a lot of damage towards this Swamper. Probably two shot on it. Um, so I'm kind of a bit scared. I do have Rain Dance team, semi Rain Dance. Swamper has Rain Dance for the likes of Swift Swim Kindra. But with Sandstorm involvement here and Vaporeon going around places, Kindra doesn't get Dragon Pulse in this generation. And uh, it's it's not a site I want to be in. So basically, I expect Hidden Power Grass, but he makes an exceptional move. Oh my God, Hyde is 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 playing. It's outplaying me left and right. Uh, now, right now, stuff have been working into his favor. Tyrantar is very bulky. Vaporeon is quite significant bulky. Zapdos is quite significant bulky. His Pokémons are considered, you know, outside of Claydol, I would imagine those Pokémons are considered very good. So Claydol. It's a good Pokemon, but I guess in the third generation it's a quite an excellent Pokemon because it levitate and it's a unique typing. But Raikou against Claydol, I'm expecting it to go for Earthquake because here's the thing, right? Earthquake does not one-shot me, I don't believe, without a band and attack investment. But uh, chance of me switching out are also there. Swampert could be one switch that he may actually see it coming, but I cannot one-shot this. So even if I switch out to it. He can still do something about this, right? So I'm gonna go for a crunch, see how much damage I can do. I don't know if he's gonna expect the crunch, because mostly sub, you hidden power and stuff like that, but I got crunch and T-Bolt and Call Mind and Substitute, but he does go for the explosion. This was raising up a question, because I could have, have easily have subbed here, expecting him to over predict me to switch out to something else. He still hasn't seen Kindra, so he doesn't know what I have. There's no team display here we going on, you know? There's nothing like that going on, so. I'm wondering if that was the case or whether or not he actually did expect me to do something else against him like in power grass or something But that really wouldn't be too smart because I know I'm not even gonna two shot it, you know seeing how much crunch did but uh, speaking of that Kindra versus Abdos. This was a blind switch on both of our behalfs. Of course He switches out to something very fast and quite offensively threatening Kindra is not gonna be liking that at all because uh, I'm thinking okay, okay, okay L Listen, listen. I guess I can rain dance, right? I can rain dance but Vaporeon is gonna completely wall me. Tyranitar can come in, negate the rain like it never was set up in the first place. Uh, so that's quite on. It's quite terrible. But I also have to. Uh, I have to ask you guys: How would you feel if Sandstorm had a different benefit? If there was no cheap damage, because I swear to God, in this generation, when it's so slow, that cheap damage takes the battles forever. But my question is: How would you feel if a Sandstorm uh, like? lowers down accuracy for every Pokemon on the field. How would you feel? Anyways, speaking of that, I didn't expect him to T-Ball, to be honest. I switch out to Aerodactyl, trying to get that Rock Slide uh, Bandit going on, because it's gonna one-shot him if he's offensive. It will one-shot him, guaranteed. Uh, you know, Vaporeon gets two-shotted, Tyrantar probably, perhaps, maybe even gets two-shotted. Not too sure with lefty support, but there is a chance of flinch. So, on the switch, I mean. Uh, basically, that's why I'm saying maybe not to shot it, but it definitely would 
put it down to 80% and there again is a chance of flinch which is all I need uh, before I would be standing in uh, quite of a predicament but anyways I, I think that's the right word uh, T-Boat is gonna be doing way too much damage and I'm thinking okay let's just go Hydro Pump it's gonna do about 60% I would imagine Max uh, invest in the special attack I miss of course doesn't matter because honestly at the end of the day you know he can two shot me and I would need to bank on a crit in order to take this Pokemon down and of course he's got Vaporeon to completely stop me in my tracks of Terra or a track so of uh, as I wanted to pull pull in some Terra, but uh, Terra didn't really happen, so that's kind of kind of unfortunate. But um, speaking of Terra, uh, Thunderbolt is gonna take down the Kindra. Uh, quite unfortunate, and it's um, it's it's. It, it, I'm in a situation when Swampert is the only Pokemon remaining, right? And if he's got Hidden Power Grass, I am definitely a goner. So, I think this is going to be a moment of truth, plus it doesn't really matter because again, Vaporeon is there, Durantar is there, hey, Claydol was taken down, so it's not a 6-0, so it's not that bad. <laughs> oh no, but uh, honestly, I've just recorded this still, uh, bring you guys the bell, you know, while I was recording it, I was thinking, uh, it was really slow, you don't even understand, it was going like 20% this bell right now, it, it, it took forever, but I was thinking, uh, sometimes it just got uh, completely destroyed. You know, it doesn't make the battle any less valid to be used. Uh, appreciate my opponent for play outplaying me on some turns. Definitely there with Ice Beam and Earthquake predicament. Uh, just predicting me like an actual uh, monster. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much how that one went. Uh, the battle is going to be ending up here. Swampert really cannot do much against this, sadly enough. And um, yeah, that is the first generation for you guys. Uh, <laughs> Man, I'm actually wondering, aren't all of his Pokemon like barely even scratched thinking about it? Like Zabda's full HP, Vaporeon probably sub is the only damage I ever did, which was his own damage. <laughs> the Ranitar thing hasn't been scratched at all. Oh my god, I think that was a perfect 5-0. And all of his Pokemon like are completely fine and I'm like there, you know, just completely rubble hey at least i'm in the pokemon center so i can go right now run to pokemon nurse joy not pokemon nurse joy po nurse joy is not a pokemon run to nurse joy get my pokemon healed get stuff done and right now i'm just being a mess man going around places i don't know why <laughs> don't ask me but anyways uh that's gonna be it for me i hope you guys have enjoyed this match with me and i see you guys in the next one peace